Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. So today we're going to be doing the love reading for the sign of Gemini for the month of July. Alright, Gemini, we're going to get right into it and pull your two cards for this month. <clears throat> Gemini, I'm going to start right out with Flirt. Nice, I love Flirt. And pay attention to red flags. Wow, interesting. So flirt and pay attention to red flags. Uh, bottom of the deck, we have healing family issues. So interesting. Could be, right? Could be that you're in the middle of something with family issues. And so you're not really in a like, committed relationship necessarily. Could be you're flirting with someone. Could be in a relationship and still flirting with somebody, right? So we're going to see what that's all about with the, with the reading. Make sure you guys can see everything. Yeah. All right. What's going on with Gemini for July 2019? Love. Show me. First card out. Interesting. We've got Eight of Pentacles and Two of Swords. Good old land of indecision, right? Four of Pentacles. Queen of Swords at the center. Beautiful energy. I love this queen. And Temperance. Fourteen. Interesting. The Magician. Six of Swords. And Eight of Swords. Wow. So, yeah, a lot of this is fitting in very much with this energy. Pay t paying attention to red flags. And there we go. It's a tower moment for you guys. So, yeah, you're having a tower moment. Certainly, when you're healing, fa uh, healing family issues, you would, have, you would be necessarily having a tower moment, right? So, right, immediately, <clears throat> this whole july month for you is all about communication getting honest with individuals and getting honest about yourself with yourself right um we got the moon coming right out at the very beginning so moon energy is certainly talking about going into areas that are that are scary um where we don't see well we don't have all the information right so it's a little can cause a lot of apprehension um moon talks about when we're going through periods uh periods of our lives where um, we're not really sure what's going to happen next, right? Or we may not have all of the details about a certain scenario, and so going through it can be kind of nerve-wracking. It can be kind of um, angsty, anxiety-written, right? Just a little bit nervous. Sometimes it can be downright scary, right? But oftentimes when you get through these periods, you do get enlightened. You get an illumination on a certain area in your life and everything becomes clearer. You realize you really didn't have anything to fear in the first place, right? Um, it wasn't really, you know, what you, when, once you come through, because you can see it's like a passageway, right? Going through the valley, the dark valley by the moonlight, right? So that's what it indicates. It indicates to travel through a period um, perhaps a period in your life or an area in your life, right? And then what happens once you come through that period, you come out better for it. You realize there was nothing ever to really be apprehensive about. It was cleansing. It needed to happen. Moon is also cancer energy, right? So it's very much about feelings, delving into your feelings. So it can be healing family issues, moon energy. Moon energy is very much about healing family issues because a lot of times... When you're healing family issues, you go to places that can be quite dark, depressing. Um, you go to memories that could maybe be uh, depressing or either upsetting in, in some kind of way, right? Distressing. Um, and so you have, to, and you have to go back to those memories or those occurrences sometimes to heal the family issues. So that's very much moon energy, and that's the first card out, right? So it's the 18 in the deck, all right? So now we go right into another eight, eight of pentacles. Part of the way that you're dealing with some of these issues is that you're putting your nose to the grindstone, Gemini. You're working. You're working away. Um, you know, uh, 
this kind of Gemini here is a work can be a workaholic, right? You can possibly be a workaholic, but you find that the uh, the discipline and the boundaries and uh, the kind of structure, right, of work is what's helping you kind of get through some of this moon issue, some of these issues right now that could be very emotional for you. Certainly with a tower moment, this is a very emotional month for you, Gemini. Very emotional. Um, you know, and so you're feeling like you're having to juggle, right? It could be certainly like that you've been pulled into some situation where you feel like, right? Because you've got two of swords, right? Again, uh, more moon looking by the crescent moon with the river of the emotions behind two of swords is like this kind of like uh, energy or sometimes you feel you can be feel you can be feeling like you've been forced to make a choice, right? Um, you can be feeling like you have to make a choice. Uh, but you can't. Sometimes this could be a choice between your lover or your family or members in a family or your career and your passions. Whatever the choice is, it's a choice that you just can't seem to make. You can't seem to give one up for the other. And actually, Two of Swords is more like um, it's an indication to go deeper because as you go deeper into this kind of energy and when you're weighing out and you're kind of like trying to figure out one option over the other, you realize that really what it's about, it's balancing the two. There's no, reason, there's no reason to pick one over the other. In fact, twos are the numbers, is the number for duality. It's the number for balance, right? So it's not necessarily always choosing something when you have twos. A lot of people tend to, it's quite interesting how a lot of people tend to go instantly, whenever they see two of something, they instantly feel like the symbolism is to that, you, that you're being, uh, that you have to make a choice, right? It's one or the other, right? It's one or the other. And that's a very kind of like, um, so that's, a, that's kind of almost like a mentality that we're raised with, right? As a culture, as a society, we're always raised with that, you know, uh, given the choice, one should always be better than another and should be the choice. So one should be higher. There's always a value. There seems to be like this value system that we're kind of entrenched with. To the degree that whenever we see twos of something, we feel like this must be about choice. But in fact, twos are about duality. Twos are about one and a one coming together and being in harmony and being in balance. And how do you balance two sides of yourself? How do you, you know, how do you incorporate the two sides? And that's the that's really kind of the lesson here, right? Because really, when you look at the cards, you see the you see the imagery. How could you possibly choose one sort of the other? They look absolutely exactly like so they both were serving a, the same sort of necessary part in your life so how would you make a choice right it necessitates balance and I think that's something that you're probably dealing with right now you may also have been called into a situation with family where you're like uh oh why am I being called into this you really want to just keep, carry on working could also be an issue about money because here you come in with the four of pentacles and it's like, ah, uh, you're getting a little bit worried. I think somebody might be coming. You might be worried about somebody who usually comes and asks you for money, coming to ask you for some more money. You're like, no, uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh, don't do it. You know what I mean? He's holding on here. This energy, four of pentacles, four being the number for stability, right? But oftentimes the need or the desire for stability can, uh, can uh, sort of, run amok right it can get like uh an addiction and then that's what happens when people are just working for money working for money working for money they have plenty of money they have plenty of stability yet they're still working you know you ever meet somebody like that you know they got money they got plenty of money and it's like yet the you know the first thing they'd rather do is go always take on more work to make more money and quite often they don't actually spend the money or enjoy the money and so that's the warning sign with this card. But in this instance, I feel the energy is that you're just kind of holding on to what you've got because I feel like somebody's coming into you again, certainly with this healing family issue. Somebody's coming into you again who probably comes and asks you for money or has asked you for money in the past and you're just unwilling to give it to them this time. You know, you're just like, look, th this has got to stop. It could be that, you know, you not giving them money is changing the whole relationship because you're having a tower moment. Look at that with death right behind it. Right. Look at those two. <laughs> you know, when you talk about imagery and just the, you know, the coloring that, that jumps out at you, the tower and death, right? So, um, 
Right, so you're not willing to do this with this individual. And so you have Queen of Swords at the center of the reading, which is quite interesting. Queen of Swords is like, okay, now it's... Queen of Swords, she's the queen who has learned how to stop being all things to all people. She's learned how to stop wearing masks. She's learned how to stop trying to satisfy other people and being true to herself, right? She's understood that at times she hasn't been true to herself. She's understood that at, she understands that at times... Or she's understood that at times she's worn a false face herself. But in so tearing that away, in doing the hard work of tearing that away, because it can be difficult to do that. It can be difficult to show exactly who we are. Um, it can make us feel vulnerable sometimes. You know, if you, if you really tell somebody, you know, if you really show a side of yourself, or, you know, it could be as simple as showing, telling somebody what you're into, certain kind of books. Say you're, say you're into fan fiction or you're into plays or you're into something, you know, but you don't tell people because you're embarrassed of it or, or whatever. You have a self-esteem issue about it, right? So that's a form of wearing a mask, right? It's not like that you're actually lying to anyone or that you're trying to be fake, but it is a form of wearing a mask. And so when you truly cut away all of the masks, and you be who you are 100%. It is difficult, but once you do it, you become the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is totally clear. Um, she's, she has clarity. She has, uh, she, can, she has piercing insight. She can see a liar at you know, 20 paces. You, know, you, don't, you almost don't need to open your mouth. She can almost see you the moment you begin to formulate that lie in your head. She can see, you know, she can almost read that off of you. Right, that's how keen her insight is. That's why she holds the sword of truth, right? The sword of insight and clear thinking, of clear seeing, right? She holds it up ready to cut you down. She beckons you, right? She's a queen who beckons you. She's willing to listen to you, right? She's not like some of the other women in the deck, like the high priestess, who doesn't beckon you at all. You have to come to her with a tr tribute and almost beg her for her assistance, right? But the queen of swords is much more like, oh yeah, come on in. You want to talk to me? I'll talk to you, but beware that I'm going to call you on your BS. I'm not going to entertain any nonsense because I am the Queen of Swords for a reason. And you've come to me for a reason. You've, you know what I mean? There is, there is a, a meaning in her beckoning, right? Because she's beckoning you because you're looking, you're looking at her and you're looking to seek her advice. And so she says, yes, you can come in. But it is you who seek her out, right? And so in that way, it's like, you know, she's, she's letting you know that, you know, um, you must be, uh, you must be true, you know, you must be clear and you must somehow desire me to be clear with you, right? Because you've sought me out, you sought her out. So, you know, in that gesture, you understand also that there's something inside of you or something inside of people who come towards you when you're exhibiting, when you're in your queen of swords, the people who are coming towards you and see that energy, they, some part of them wants you to be like this with them. Some part of them desires you to be stern and truthful and um, discerning with them, right? It's hard at times verbally even. Swords can be, certainly uh, court cards and the swords can indicate, you know, strong, being strong verbally. Not abusive, but strong, really making your point. It's the, it's the suit for communication. So, the, you know, it's almost as if the sword is the tongue, you know, the way the words can slice, they can cut, they can pierce you, right? It's, it's that kind of feeling sometimes. So it can be quite bloody, swords, swords energy, in terms of how ruthless, brutal. You know, you ever come up to somebody who tells you to honest, you know, tell calls you 100% on your on your BS or calls someone one you have you ever seen a dressing down? You know, a true dressing down or a reading of somebody by someone else, it can be absolutely brutal and so that is really the kind of energy of the Queen of Swords. Now, I'm not saying that's what you are, but I'm saying that you're certainly in that place right now. If you're healing family issues right now, you're, and certainly if red flags are coming in with this four of pentacles, you see somebody get ready like, hey, uh, can I borrow? And you're just like, before they even get the word borrow or lend or whatever out of their mouth, or can you help me out with this project? Like you already stopped them with this queen of swords almost, you know? Um, and it's necessary, right? Like I say, it's necessary for you. You're at a point now where if this has happened before with this individual, you're not letting them happen and it happened again. Right. 
And certainly moon is, like I say, moon is healing issues, which can be very much family healing issues anyway. So temperance comes in and you're kind of like, yeah, you're also, you know, wanting to take care of yourself, right? Temperance, 14, is, is when you have rule and dominion over yourself and your own feelings. Temperance is as much about feeling good and tempered within yourself as anything, right? And as, as, as much about that as it is in having temperance when you deal with others. But ultimately, it's making sure that you are inside yourself having some, a certain sense of equilibrium, a certain sense of uh, natural motion, right? With your emotions, right? They're, they're where you want them to be. You don't allow yourself to get too upset you don't, you know, you don't allow the extremes of emotion in the, in that way that it's negative. Where, you know, temperance is like that energy that counteracts kind of that mood swing, the unnecessary mood swings, the unnecessary, uh, like, uh, freak out type of behavior. You know, you ever people who, you know, gen like they can fly off the handle. They're really angry one minute, and then the next minute they're all cool. You know, and it's like you don't know. You know, you ever meet somebody who has that really kind of chaotic, n almost nervous and chaotic energy where you never really know where their emotions are going to be and they wear, you know, and they always lash out. They feel free to lash out at certain times, you know. That's that's someone who is who's not exhibiting, in, exhibiting any kind of temperance of themselves. They're not able to get their emotions under any kind of control or focus or... Um, <clears throat> clarity, right? Because with the foot in the water of the emotions, that understanding of who you are and what you're truly feeling, there's no need to, you know what I mean? When you have clarity of emotions and clarity of feeling, uh, you can understand, you know, this kind of thing, when this, when you have, when you exhibit this kind of energy, you under, when things make you upset, you understand why they make you upset and you don't necessarily react to them. You understand the emotion and you let it pass through you and away, and you handle it in a positive way. You transmute it, which is why temperance can also be the card of alchemy. Because instead of taking anger or something like that, that kind of emotion that can pop off, instead of just reacting to it and lashing out, you're looking at it, you understand it, and you're in control of it. It's not that you pretend you're not angry. It's not that you're dead inside. It's not that you don't have emotions. It's that you, that you are powerful enough to control the extent of your emotions, understand them, understand where they come from, and transmute them into something positive rather than just simply reacting, which is when you have no control over yourself, right? And so you are very much kind of exhibiting a lot of temperance right now, certainly if you're dealing with family members where... The situation can be very volatile, certainly if you're in a tower moment, right? <clears throat> and then a tower moment can be big time family restructuring, healing, you know, because healing family issues necessitates the need, necessitates speaking about everything, people speaking to each other who haven't spoken to each other before, things happening that are difficult, um, truths being told, lies being uncovered you know that is the nature of family healing and so the tower is always going to come in because you get clarity on something that was built to a certain degree on a false foundation or a weak foundation right and as you come through all of this here comes magician right and i think excuse me i have to take a sip of water this is very much um this could be somebody that's come into your life that you're flirting with, yeah, right? The magician. It could be somebody who right now is taking your mind off of things because you've got flirt coming in too. And flirt is a lighthearted energy. And I think that certainly right now while you're exhibiting this queen of swords, it's like it would necessarily have to be somebody who's like the magic man or the magic woman who is around you, right? You may know this person, you know, you may be friends with them. You may be friends with benefits, um, you know, I'm not sure that I don't feel like you're in a relationship with this person, right? I think that this is more for your single kind of uh, 
Geminis that are going through that. Or if you are in a relationship, then flirt is not for you, right? That it's more to do with pay attention to red flags and healing family issues, right? Because I certainly think paying attention to red flags has a lot to do with this four of pentacles. However, if you are single, there is this sense of like someone there... This person is someone who's quite easy to be around. You don't have to worry about them. You've got so much going on with your family and everything that you don't have to worry about this individual. They take care of themselves. You don't have, it's not like, okay, now I have to worry about this person too. It's like, they're there. They manifest for themselves. They got their own money, their own thing and everything. They're very much your equal, right? Um, but they also feel like very much like a confidant, a companion, a friend, someone that you can lean on. It could be someone that you just, that just takes your mind off of things with light romance, with light flirting. Somebody you may have a couple drinks with or dinner with here and there. You may only see them occasionally, right? But there's certainly somebody that you look at and you have a lot of like admiration for, certainly attraction. You're getting going to get to a point where you're just going to, you may be moving. Some of you may be moving. You may be looking for another place. You may be physically moving, right? Um, as a result of some of this uh, family healing, or this can also be old friendships as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be family, but it can be healing old friendships um, or wounds that have, or, or fail friendships that have fallen apart. Um, after you come through all of this, it's almost like you kind of like, I think you're going to feel very much like going away from some, some, from some of the players that were part of this, right? It could be kind of like, okay, this is done, we healed this, but you, you, it's not like you now wanna go back to this fold, right? It's like, there's going to be some issues that are gonna come out, see, and you're not reacting the way you used to react before, certainly with that four of pentacles. Somebody, you know, I mean, I think that you refusing to either give money or assistance to someone who's always used you before in the past, right? And now you're being brutally honest with them with your king, queen of swords. That's the tower moment. And it's like affecting that relationship, right? And it's breaking down that relationship. But I think it's going to heal the relationship ultimately because it's kind of like what this person needs. They need you to say no to them, right? They need you to say no. I'm not going to give you the money. I'm not going to deal with your stuff this time. This could also be romantic as well. This could be an old relationship, you know, and then and that could be where the pay attention to red flags are coming in because certainly with this four of pentacles, it could be an old flame or an old relationship who's coming in. It's like need some money or need something from you in some physical way. And you're just holding on and you're not willing this time, right? So that's the tire moment because now this dynamic with them is going to completely change. Right. And that's not to say that you're going your whole life now is going to be devastated by it because it's not your choices and the way you're handling them now is a positive choice for you. So your life is not necessarily going to be devastated in that sense like we sometimes associate with the tarot. It's just that this relationship is going to crumble and not be the same again um, because they're not getting the same old reaction out of you. You know, I hope I am being clear about what I'm meaning. Right. And so it might be a little bit of a devastating tower moment for them, but ultimately it will be good for them because whatever you've been doing before hasn't, you know, it's not like they got their shit together. They're back again. You know, I almost want to say like they have this codependency with you, but you're kind of moving on. You're trying to move on, you know? And I think you very much want to heal from this because you know that this is holding you back with this moon energy. You know this is holding you back. You know that part of you, it could be that part of you has been holding on to this relationship or to this dynamic as well because you didn't really truly want to let it go because you were nervous, right? You're nervous to go through this path now without this kind of crutch of this kind of, you know, relationship that isn't good or this family dynamic that isn't good. But now you're willing to do that. You're willing to go forward and even though it's scary for you, you know you'll be better for it. And so now you're changing the way you're reacting to people. Let's get some clarity on this reading. So down here when I say you're going to be moving away, there's certainly going to be somebody who's going to be playing the victim, Eight of Swords. I don't think this is you necessarily. I think somebody's going to be very much like, I can't, you know, they're going to, this is my victim card, Eight of Swords. It's somebody who always blames somebody else for all their actions, right? They're always blaming other people. They don't take, you know, they always 
their their motto is if you didn't act like that I wouldn't have to act like this you know it's like everything they do they base it on others they feel like they're forced to react a certain way or they're being forced to um, behave in a certain pattern in reaction to what you're doing right and of course that's nonsense you know they have to take responsibility for their actions you know and they may like actually act as if they don't see you they may be acting like totally oblivious to their responsibilities right this could be like a third party right so this could be a third party in this scenario who has some responsibility for why this individual who key, who has come back or this individual you're dealing with or this family dynamic you're dealing with is the way it is and this person is unwilling to take responsibility for their bit in it you know what i mean their part in it their part in the toxicity of it all yeah, I want to say, for instance, if you're dealing with a family issue, right, you might be dealing with cousins and this is the cousin's mom and you're an auntie and it's like half of the like dynamic and dysfunction is her fault, but she's so unwilling and blinded to it. She doesn't want to accept her responsibility. And so as you heal and your family starts to heal, now you're standing up to, for instance, these cousins or whatever, right? And so the dynamic is changing between you and you come out of it like turning your back and maybe healing, maybe coming to an understanding with these cousins and giving them some cold, hard truths, right? Um, and now the dynamic shifts and you've decided to just move on and be like, okay, you know, I did the best I can. And meanwhile, here comes their mom or their care, you know, whoever was raising them in the family. And she, now she starts up because she's like, I can't believe everybody's doing all of this healing. And now I'm the bad guy, you know, and, and up until now, this person hasn't done anything to help anybody heal. Do you know what I mean? So now they're playing much like the victim. They're like the last card, the last kind of like, it's almost like an afterthought. It's almost, it's almost as if as you are moving away from the situation, imagine this. It's almost as if you're, when you, as you're moving away from the situation, you can almost, you know, you can hear this person complaining. And it's like their complaints are getting fainter and fainter as you move away from them. But yet they're still complaining. Well, I can't believe I'm the blah, 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 blah. And how dare they blame me. And, blah, 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 blah. and you're just like, yeah, okay, whatever. See ya. You know, it's like, it's hard to kind of describe, but it's like, I have this vision like that, right? Where like, you've done the healing with your, me with your family members. And the one person that nobody can kind of get through is just kind of left alienated. And uh, forever playing the victim card. Interesting. We have three cards totally pop out. So full three of swords and indolence. Interesting. So another eight talking about boundaries. Right? Boundaries and relationships. Learning that, you know, you just don't need to. Eight of cups is really good energy to go with six of swords. Because six of swords is making that decision to move away from negativity and towards positivity. And eight of cups is that realization you come to when you, real, when you decide to put criteria in place. When you decide that you don't just accept any old kind of relationship. You put boundaries in place. People have to fulfill a certain kind of... Um, they have to fulfill certain expectations to be in your life, right? And that's fine. It's like we have expectations. Stand Standards. You know, we have standards about how we want how we want people to treat us and what kind of individual we're willing to go towards, right? And we're not willing to just pour our love. You see these lotus flowers just pouring their love out over these cups. They're so unworthy. You know, they're not even worthy. They're chipped. You know, you notice these cups are chipped. The material they're made out of is flimsy. And yet these lotus cup, uh, flowers are like pouring out all of these, all of their love into these like cups that just... They're not worthy of their love. That's like just the pure, you know, essence of the cards, you know. Understanding that certain people just are not worthy of your love, you know. And so you move towards people who are. You move towards harmony, right? It's definitely a new beginning for you, a new stage in your life. You show up as the fool. The fool, of course, is always going throughout the tree of life at various stages, right? The fool showing up in any reading always means you. At a particular stage in your life that it's about to take a whole new turn. And the three of uh, swords, sorrow, right? Remembering all of the heartache that you went through. Remembering all of the pain. Um, and, and remembering the lies and kind of like the manipulation that was part of it. And choosing to, to move away from that. 
right quite interesting that those three cards pop down i'm still going to pull a couple more cards and then we'll call it still not too long it's 20 minutes all right give me some deeper cards on this reading show me Ten of Wands, Nine of Swords. Wow. Two of Swords comes out over Two of Swords. Beautiful. The Sun. Six of Cups, Seven of Cups, Eight of Swords, Five of Swords coming out, Eight of Swords, and Four of Swords of Truth. Interesting. And Hierophant. Sticking to Hierophant when you're, um, uh, your moral compass is questioned, your ideals. All right, let's get to it. Ten of pen, uh, ten of wands comes out over this moon, so it's the end of a long period. You're ready to lay down that baggage, right? This is what I was talking about, this moon energy. It's like you're ready to be done with this. Ten is the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle, right? But here, the oppression, it's like the oppression is so much, you it's, it's like you can't stand it anymore. It just has to stop. And so you decide enough is enough. You no longer, um, you know, you'd rather deal with the fear, the pain of just working through these issues, having these difficult conversations, right, um, and closing this chapter, right, rather than continually dealing with the guilt and the kind of lingering right the lingering oppression of all of that baggage 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 is very oppressive it weighs you down so it's like ten of wands is that point where you've decided that's it you know you've made it to a point where you're finally you know you're finally ready to end this chapter you're end, ready to end this stage of your life you're ready, ready to lay down that baggage and you're ready to do the hard that hard deep moon work that might be necessary for it Nine of Swords is anxiety, right? So Nine of Swords is when we're worried at night. We have anxiety. And so, like I said, a lot of you, you know, in dealing with a lot of these emotional things that are happening and certainly a lot of this mental anguish you're putting yourself through, you're getting to work. But it's anxiety and it's not based on anything real. It's just you fear you just have anxiety. I mean, anxiety is hard to pin down what you're worried about. That's why they call it anxiety, because you don't know what you're worried about. You just know you're worried. But certainly, you're working through it, and I would suggest that you continue working through it because it's necessary. It's working for you. Two of Swords is coming in over Two of Swords. Need I say more? Peace. That's why they call it peace, right? Balance. It's moon and uh, Aquarius energy. Peace. Because you finally realize that the two swords need to be in balance, right? You have the four winds in balance. Once you realize that it's not about choice but balance, you have ultimate peace. You, come, you become restful. You become peaceful. You no longer have this constant inner turmoil, this indecision, this back and forth. Sun comes out over the moon of pentacles. It's almost as if you say no to this individual. The sun comes out for you and everything starts working out right. Sometimes that can happen. It can be that when you make certain decisions, when your intention is really, really true and you finally really, really decided on something that is a positive choice, a positive choice in your life that may be difficult, it may be one you have made before, but it's it's it was the necessary choice and it was the necessary change you made. Sometimes as soon as you make that change, it's like the sun comes right out. Sometimes the universe comes right out and reaffirms just to let you know that, yes, that's what you were supposed to do. And so I feel like holding on, holding on to this money issue with this individual, like I say, past relationship or family, um, and saying no, saying no, I'm not going to give you what you need. Um, and, and really meaning it, it's like all of a sudden, it's like you get this breakthrough. It helps to release this baggage, right? Because the sun is underneath the Ten of Wands, urging it forward, urging it to uh, complete, uh, urging the card to uh, fulfill its energy, which is the energy of completion. Six of Cups comes out at the center, so total pleasure. You get a lot of pleasure in this new you. You get a lot of... Um, Six of Cups is drawing in also love, right? This individual, this magician, I think, sees you or who you are now. You're very strong. Not to say that you weren't strong before, but you're exhibiting Queen of Swords energy, and it's certainly bringing kind of a sexiness to you, and somebody's got their eye on you. 
All right, Six of Cups, certainly somebody wants to get closer. Somebody, there's deep feelings. There's a friend. It could be friendship that's uh, developing into love, or it could just be flirtation. Six of Wands is just very light. It is very quite just pleasurable energy, Six of, Wands, uh, Six of Cups. I keep saying Wands. I'm so sorry. I mean Six of Cups, right? It's very kind of, um, you know, just pleasurable, enjoyable energy. You know, it's Sun and Virgo. So it's like, yeah, it's flirtatious. It's it's um, a flower and a cup of coffee. It's enjoying each other's company, right? Some people say it's soulmate energy. It can be soulmate energy also, but it's more it's synonymous certainly with harmonious relationships, right? Relationships and interactions that are always kind of harmonious, peaceful, right? Always lead toward a good outcome and so this could very much be your magician who i think you're flirting with right now temperance is coming in because you understand that the nature of you know that you need to be tempered because sometimes the nature of passionate relationships can get quite debauched right seven of cups is, can sometimes be uh too much of a good thing you know getting what you wish for and then realizing it's not what you wanted be careful what you wish for you know, be careful to to not overindulge in kind of, you know, carnal desires, money, sex, beauty, you know, things that appeal to vanity and pride, you know, can be quite the botched behavior. And so Seven of Cups, you know, that temperance allows you not to, not to do that, right? It allows you not to go too far, you know, into your fantasies or into kind of like uh, sort of... I want to say behavior, like, I want to say in relationships like that easy road, right? The quick satisfaction in relationships, the quick, you know, and I don't mean sexually necessarily, but just behaving in such a way that it's, it's, it's the easy kind of like, uh, satisfaction. It's the easy pat on the back. You know, sometimes it's hard to say no in a relationship or to be difficult with somebody because it's, it's not easy, right? Now you have to deal with, you know, maybe an argument or you may have to deal with you know, an attitude or the communication might falter slightly, you know, they might get pissed off at you, right? You know, it's not always about just uh, satisfying the little things, right? Sometimes you have to hold out through the difficult times and you just have to uh, temper yourself. Eight of Swords interference, interesting. So Eight of Swords can be, like I said, somebody coming in who doesn't like you being with this individual, doesn't like you having somebody in your corner because Eight of Swords can certainly talk about people interfering. You talk about uh, negative energies coming in, you know, people who overstep their boundaries with you. Eight of Swords being, you know, eight being the number of boundaries as well. It can also uh, indicate acting too hastily. Sometimes when we act too hastily and we just do things too quickly without considering all of the ramifications, right? But I think in this, in this instance, it's more about, you know, people who are overstepping their bounds in some way. Could be they're overstepping their bounds with you and your, and your magician. They're, they're maybe trying to interfere with this relationship somehow, right? Because they see that you have somebody. This could very much be this old relationship here, this individual, so that while you're also dealing with this, they're on, you know, part of them may be trying to interfere with your current relationship. So take care of there. Five of Swords, also um, kind of like power struggle energy, right? Five of Swords is about power struggles. It's about cheap wins, right? That's It's the card for defeat, right? But it's like... It's defeat because it's the card for those who cheat and win. Well, they might as well not have won at all, right? Um, it's the card for backstabbing, using the you know using underhanded tactics to win at all costs, uh, winning power for power's sake. It's just very nasty kind of like, and so you're moving away from that. You're at six of swords. This is five of swords. So you're moving away from that energy very much so. And certainly, again, this could be. Uh, more energy that's just coming out from this past relationship or from individuals, but it's specifically that power struggle that you just had enough, like you don't care, right? Whereas whoever is like engaging in this with you is almost as if they always want to have one up on you. They always want to be better. This could be a family member who's always in competition with you, you know, who's always trying to kind of cheat you out of your win or make it seem like the things that you've accomplished are somehow worthless and the things they've accomplished are like the best things since sliced bread. 
This could certainly be part of the energy and healing the family issues. It could be that you'd be telling your family, look, this is the reason why I'm, I'm leaving y'all. I don't like to deal with y'all. And I don't want I want to move on with my life and move away from this because you guys still don't know how to have any honor. You still kind of cheat. You still don't tell the truth. You still lie. So this could certainly happen in certain areas where perhaps you just feel like, you could be feeling like, you know, you've tried your best. You've tried to be honest. You've tried to you know, take a different tact and people still continue to sort of act in a very toxic and negative way with you. And so now, like I said, the Six of Swords to me is very much like done. You know, I'm done. I'm moving away from it. Even if it could be a physical move, like I said. And then Four of Swords with Truce, right? So Eight of Swords. Like I said, it's almost as if, you know, it's almost as if you're moving away like before, I was correlating this move away from this individual, right? And so here, it's also like, yeah, this individual is like keeps this individual in the family is playing the, or this ex maybe who's playing the victim and like, yeah, you know, it's all your fault. You're just like, whatever. You're, you're doing four, four of swords is like you're retreating to your corners and you're just unwilling to engage. You're almost not even willing to pay this like ridiculous um, energy any kind of attention. You don't even want to pay any attention to it. You're ready to move. It's a truce, you know, and it's a truce in a sense that, yeah, you win. If that's how you feel, good, you know, continue to feel that way. Like, I don't really, I don't really care. It doesn't really, you know, I'm ready to move on to such a degree that I don't even want to finish this debate. You know, I could care less, right? I could care less about who's right and who's wrong and whether you're playing the victim. I don't care that you're playing the victim. It doesn't make, you know, I don't care that you, you could even be blaming me. I don't. None of that kind of like uh, low brow reverse psychology guilt tripping tactics are working on you anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's what I call it, you know. So, all right, folks. So, this is it. I'm going to call it. It's been a long reading. You get the picture. You're moving on. Um, this could be a family or an old relationship, and certainly somebody's in that you're flirting with. But for right now, I'm just going to call it. What a reading for July, Gemini. If any of you guys are resonating with this, please like it, subscribe if you'd like, you know. And I understand if you don't subscribe, I know you're just flashing forward through the channels. Maybe you just popped on this video. But you can also um, just click that bell and, and that way if there's any kind of Gemini videos that I'm putting up, you'll only get notified about those. So you can really like fine tune it. So, um, But if some of you would like to get a private reading, please follow the link down below your screen. Um, certainly if this resonated with you and you want to go a little bit deeper, you can always, uh, we can always do a reading. I can do a reading for you to get deeper into your specific issue. Um, but for right now, this is July, Gemini, and I wish you all the best. I love you. Bye-bye.